let me share my my screen and I can switch to the terminal. Uh, first of all, I will copy some uh, examples that we are going to uh, use in this uh, lesson. They are located as uh, user, local, local, examples, lesson 11. There are lots of examples actually. I hope we will uh, be able to finish all of them. So uh, today we will uh, talk about uh, branching uh, with if in bash scripting. But uh, before uh, starting with branching, we need to know uh, about uh, what is true and what is false in uh, in in Bash. Uh, so every command in Bash, when it is uh, executed, it returns an exit status, and uh, by convention, an exit status of zero indicates success that the command was successful, and uh, anything anything else is a failure. For example, let, let's try uh, a simple command. So uh, this is a successful command. Uh, let's see this uh, uh, variable. This is a special uh, shell variable that indicates the status of the last uh, command, the return status or the exit status of the last command. And uh, since it, it gives the value zero, zero, it means that the command was successful. Uh, let, let's try another uh, command that is not successful. So, uh, static directory does not exist and the command ls failed. Now let's see what is the return status of the command. The return status of the command is uh, two. It doesn't matter two or one, it is different than zero, which means that uh, it, it is not, uh, the command was not successful. So uh, zero is successful, anything different than zero is not successful. Uh, and the value may maybe uh, returns the, the kind of error or the kind of problem that uh, was encountered. Uh, bash has also some uh, special kind of uh, constructs or uh, variables that are uh, that does return. It is like command. For example, true. It does nothing. It just returns exit status zero, which means that uh, it was successful. Exit status zero. And there is also this false. It does nothing. It just returns exit status uh, one, which is uh, different than, than zero. Uh, now let's see how to uh, build an if uh, statement or an if command. So this is how uh, we write an if a command if and then uh, one or more, more commands uh, here separated by a semi semicolon and a semicolon at, at the end, uh, then keyword, and then one or more commands here separated by semicolon, and then T. It is the if in uh, reverse. So since uh, this returns uh, an exit status of zero, which means uh, success, successful, then uh, these uh, statements are executed. And uh, the echo command displays it is it is true. Uh, now let's modify it. So since this uh, returns a failure, this command uh, returns failure, does not return success, then uh, 
the commands after then are not executed. And so not, nothing is uh, printed. And uh, af after if we can have one or more commands, uh, le let's uh, see this case. So we have uh, one statement, two statements, but uh, what matters is the exit status of the last statement. And uh, since the last statement returns failure, then uh, it is not executed the, the, the command after if, but it is executed the command after else. And uh, it prints, uh, it, it is false. Uh, let's change the order, for example. Uh, we have to use semicolons because these are different commands and they are separated by semicolons. So if false true, so it doesn't matter that this fails, uh, the last command succeeds. So uh, the if will execute the command that is after uh, then and it, it is true. Uh, we can use the command test. We can use the the command test. Uh, I, I see raise hand. Uh, uh, you you can write. You you can write questions on the chat, and I will ask them later, or I will stop and uh, check at uh, check for the questions later. So uh, let, let's create a dummy file. Uh, usually uh, we, uh, or th there is a command called test that uh, can be used to test uh, several uh, conditions and uh, it returns uh, success or failure, true or false, de depending whether the con condition is satisfied uh, or not. Uh, for example, we can test whether a file exists or not uh, with this command. For example, uh, if test uh, exists, then Uh, this option E uh, tests that, uh, whether the uh, file exists and is a regular file. And so if it exists, then uh, this command uh, returns success and the command after then is uh, executed. Another uh, a similar uh, construction, or it is, it is actually a command uh, like test is uh, this one uh, we, we can write the same test like this so uh, this one is a, a command like like test but it requires that the last argument is a closing uh, bracket So uh, now the output is file exists. Uh, let, let's try to remove this file and run the same command again. Now uh, the test fails, and the, the part after the else is executed. File does not file does not exist. Uh, 
very there is an example here a script example example script which uh, uses different uh, test uh, file test it is testing files uh, for different conditions first of all uh, we have a constant here file constant file and we give it uh, the, uh, the name of uh, file then we check here whether the file exists and and is a regular file uh, if uh, it does not exist the the part after else is executed uh, we print file does not exist and uh, exit one uh, if file exists then uh, we make several uh, other tests uh, with option F, we test whether the file is a regular file. With option D, we can test whether it is a directory. With option R, uh, we can test whether it is readable or not. With uh, option W, we can test whether it is writable. Uh, it is writable means that we have write permission on, on this file. We can write, uh, we can modify this file. With uh, option X, we can test or we can check whether it is exec executable or if it is a directory, if it is searchable. Uh, let, let's try to execute this file, uh, this uh, script. So uh, this file is a regular file. It is uh, readable, it is writable. Uh, it, this is the output of the file. Uh, if uh, we uh, see again the file, uh, you you can see here uh, there is this exit uh, command, uh, and we use it uh, twice. Uh, in this case, it is uh, it is exit one. In this case, it is without option. Uh, this exit uh, terminates the the script. Uh, the script ends uh, if if it uh, gets to this command exit. And this is the uh, exit uh, code or the exit uh, value of the script. Script. Uh, if no option is given, then zero. It is assumed uh, success. The script uh, ended successfully. Uh, if another option, if another value besides zero, uh, it is failure. The, the script ends with an error. And uh, usually we can also uh, remove the last uh, exit. Because uh, if uh, if there is no exit in, in the script, then uh, the exit value of the last command is uh, returned. So the script return returns the the exit code of the last command that is executed. Uh, we can do the same thing, uh, but with uh, with a function, we have seen functions last uh, last time in the last les lesson. So again, we give a value to the file, and uh, here we have a function. And inside inside this function, uh, we make again uh, these tests. And at the end of the script, uh, we call we call the function test file to execute this function. Uh, notice now that uh, instead of exit, we uh, use return inside the function. It it has the same uh, function as the exit, or it, it does the same thing. It terminates the function, not, not the script. And this is the exit code, or it returns the exit code of the of the function. In case of an error, we uh, return something that is different than zero to uh, to indicate that uh, the function failed. Uh, otherwise, uh, we we return zero or we return nothing, and uh, by default, the exit the exit code of the last command is uh, returned, or the last command that is executed. The same thing. Now, we can see with help uh, what kind of uh, options we can use, we can use with a uh, test. 
So there are file operators or file uh, testing. Uh, for example, uh, this E uh, returns true if, if file exists. Uh, F, if file exists and is a regular file. D, if it is a directory. Uh, w, if it is writable. X, if it is executable, the file is executable or has, has execute permission and so on. Uh, these are for, for files. And uh, there is this opera, uh, operation, NT, newer than. Uh, so if file one is newer than uh, file two, then this will return true. Uh, older than, uh, if file one is older than file two. And uh, there are some uh, string operator, operators. So this Z means that the string is empty. Uh, if, if the string is empty, then uh, this will return true or will succeed. Uh, this is not empty. If the string is not empty, it will succeed. And we can compare two strings with e equal. If they are e equal, uh, if they are different, we can check whether this string is uh, alphabetically uh, smaller than or before than this string. Uh, it is larger than this string. And so on. Okay, let's see another example. So uh, this Z is used to, to check whether this is empty or not. If it is uh, empty, then we uh, print an error message and uh, exit uh, with one, with error. Then it checks whether uh, this number uh, here uh, is uh, equal to zero. Uh, If it is not equal to zero, then we check whether it is uh, smaller than zero, LT, less than, less than zero. Uh, otherwise, it is not less than zero, we print the message, uh, it is positive. And here we check whether it is uh, even or odd. Uh, we get the remainder uh, of division by two. And if the remainder of division by two is zero, then it is even, otherwise it is odd. Now, uh, here is, there is not something to note here. Uh, we print this error message, but we redirect it to standard error. So usually an error message should go to a standard error. And we, do, we can do this in a script by redirecting the output, the output of the echo. So uh, we echo a message, but we uh, send it to the, Standard error. Int is negative, uh, int is uh, odd. And uh, if you remember, this int was uh, minus five. So it is negative and uh, it is odd. Uh, let's see another. Now, uh, in, in this case, we are using an, another construct uh, for testing. This is newer than, than uh, this one. Uh, it does all, everything that uh, this one does, but uh, it, it can also compare two strings by uh, a regular expression matching. So this is a pattern matching. Uh, this is a regular expression and this is, this is the, the string. And in this case, uh, this regular expression Maybe you remember when we did it. This is, this is the beginning of the string. This is the end of the string, M matches the end of the string. This is an optional minus. Optional because it has uh, a question mark. Here we have a digit and this plus means uh, one or more, one or more digits. So an optional, an optional minus and one or more digits. 
So if uh, this pattern is matched, then this, this is a number. Otherwise, uh, we print the error message. Uh, it is not an integer. So first of all, we check whether it is a number. And after we check that it is a number, we check whether, whether it is equal to zero or not, and then whether it is uh, positive or negative, and then whether it is even or odd. Now, in this uh, example, we uh, find whether a given integer is within a specified range of values. So this is the minimum value, this is the maximum value, and the, this is the number or the integer that we are going to check. First, first of all, we, uh, we check by pattern matching whether uh, this is uh, a number, uh, whether this is an integer or not. Uh, this check is whether it is an integer or not. And uh, this one negates the result of the uh, check. So if it is not an integer, uh, we, we print an error message and uh, exit with an error code. And uh, since we exit uh, the script, the rest of the script, script will, will not be executed. But uh, if it is an integer, then uh, this code will not be executed and we will continue uh, the, the rest of, of the script. And uh, here we have, we are combining uh, two expressions. Uh, if this is greater, greater or, or equal, this is greater or, or equal than this value, uh, this is less or equal than the maximum value. And uh, with, with this operator, we are combining these two expressions. This is and both of these expressions uh, must be uh, true or must succeed. So if it is uh, greater or equal than the minimum value and less, less than or equal than the maximum value, then uh, we print the message is within uh, the range. Otherwise, we print the message uh, integer is out, out of range. And uh, here is another expression. It is uh, the same as, uh, as this one. And uh, this one checks whether the integer, uh, the given integer is within the range. But in this case, we negate the whole uh, expression uh, with this ex exclamation uh, operator. And to negate the whole expression, we, we are using a parenthesis to enclose the, the whole expression. So, uh, this means if it is not within the range, uh, then we print the me message, it is outside uh, the range. Otherwise, we print the me message, it is in range. And uh, the, same, the same check as this one, but now we are using uh, this special construct. This is a similar construct to this one, but uh, this is more uh, useful for uh, integer comparison, like this one. We are comparing some integers. And uh, the syntax here is a little bit more uh, simpler. Uh, we don't have to use dollar signs uh, inside, the, uh, in front of the, the variable. And instead of, instead of greater than or equal, uh, we use this operator. And we use this one for smaller. And uh, again, this is this uh, means end logical end, and uh, this negates the whole expression. So uh, this one is more suitable for uh, integer comparison because we can use uh, these kind of operators which are more uh, natural or more intuitive uh, to understand. And now uh, we, we do the same testing, but with the old uh, style uh, testing. And uh, because this is a command, first of all, uh, we have to make sure that there, there is an empty space uh, between each element of the expression. For example, here we didn't need to include an uh, 
empty space after the parenthesis. But here we have to include an empty space after the parenthesis. And also because uh, the parenthesis uh, is uh, is interpreted interpreted by the shell. It has a special meaning meaning in shell. Uh, we have to escape it. Uh, and another difference is that the logical operators uh, with uh, with uh, this test are like this: uh, minus a for and, minus o for or. So uh, in general, uh, it is more con convenient to use either this one or this one. Uh, this is uh, uh, rarely used. All of them do the same thing. Another uh, feature of uh, this kind of testing uh, is that it also uh, recognizes uh, uh, patterns like uh, the shell patterns. For example, I'm creating the file. Now I'm going to uh, make a test. I have forgotten then here. I have to type then. So uh, if this expression, so the, the test Anyway, it, it is not working uh, as expected. I don't know why. There, there must be some uh, error uh, there. Uh, let's, let's see an example with uh, this kind of uh, uh, testing. So uh, different from the uh, uh, normal uh, type of testing, which uh, succeeds if uh, the expression returns and has an exit uh, code of uh, zero, uh, this one 
this one co considers uh, the the zero, the number zero, as uh, false, and every other number as uh, as true, as true. Because uh, this is this is for numerical expressions, and uh, in uh, in the numbers, uh, when we consider numbers, then uh, uh, zero is considered as false, and the other numbers as true. But uh, these, uh, the other kinds of uh, tests uh, check the exit status of the commands uh, after them, and an exit status of uh, zero is considered success. Uh, this is a similar example, but uh, which uses the, uh, this kind of uh, testing. So, first of all, uh, we use pattern, match pattern matching to see whether it is an uh, integer or not. And then uh, we check whether it is uh, zero. Uh, we check like this, whether it is less, less than zero. Uh, and uh, we get the remainder of division by two and uh, compare it to, to zero to check whether it is even or odd. Now, uh, these operators uh, and R and or can also be used uh, between uh, two commands. For example, command one and command uh, two. And uh, what, what happens is that after executing command one, uh, we check the exit status if it uh, succeeds. Then uh, we uh, run also the command two. If it fails, then we don't bother running running the the second command. And uh, if if it is command one or command two, then first of all we execute this command. If it fails, then uh, we execute command uh, two uh, as well. Uh, if it if it uh, if it uh, it succeeds, then we don't execute the command two. So this is like a kind of uh, branching, uh, but more compact. So if uh, if this, then this. If not this, if not this, then run this. Uh, let, let's see an example with this kind of branching. For example, make a dear temp and the cd temp so first of all we run this command if it succeeds then uh, we run the command uh, cd temp to go to to this uh, directory uh, or we can do this if the directory temp exists this is a test it is testing whether uh, the directory temp exists if directory temp exists then we don't run uh, make directory if it does not exist then we run uh, make directory uh, temp and it has created another uh, temp directory here So uh, the, this command here uh, is the same as writing uh, if 
make directory temp then it be temp p uh, it is identical uh, as this one uh, but it is more more compact and uh, the uh, this command here is the the same as uh, running if not uh, directory temp if, if it if, if it, do, it does not exist then uh, make directory temp p but of course this is a bit more more compact now we will see how to read keyboard input uh, we have a test script here and uh, this test uh, script is a kind of improvement of uh, one of the previous uh, test examples uh, we we was uh, we were checking whether uh, a number is uh, zero or not it is negative or positive it is even or, or odd etc but uh, we had to type uh, we, we had to, to, to give the number in the code like this so uh, if uh, we wanted to, to check another number then we uh, had to edit the code uh, this is hard hard coded, uh, hard -coded uh, in, in the script this is a uh, this is not uh, flexible uh, in, in this script we are changing this so that we can read uh, a value from the keyboard so the the script the program prompts the user to enter uh, an integer and uh, it reads an integer from the keyboard and then it uh, does the necessary checking so first of all we echo this uh, kind of prompt please enter an integer and this uh, option n means don't don't print an end, end of line after the string because by by default echo prints also an end of line after each uh, string then uh, we read a value from the keyboard and we store it in the in the variable uh, int with this name int and then we do the checking uh, as we have done in the in the other scripts we check uh, whether it is equal to zero. Uh, we check whether it is less than zero. Uh, we check whether it is uh, even or odd. Uh, let's let's try it a few times. Please enter an in integer zero. It is uh, zero. Please enter an integer six. Uh, six is positive. Six is even. Please enter. Please enter an integer. Uh, three. Three is positive. Three is odd. Enter an integer uh, minus seven. Minus seven is negative. Minus seven is odd. So uh, this uh, script now is uh, interactive. Uh, it reads uh, an input from the user and uh, does the checking. So it is better than the previous one uh, that we had to hard code the, the value of the number. Uh, in this uh, example script, uh, we are reading multiple uh, values uh, and we store them in multiple uh, variables. So uh, we can we can use multiple. Uh, variables uh, with uh, read with the command read and uh, then we just print the value of each uh, variable uh, le let's test it with a few different uh, inputs So 
So the first, the first variable uh, gets the value of the first word. Uh, the second variable gets the value of the uh, second word and, and so on. And uh, this input is uh, split by empty lines by default. We can change the, uh, the, split, uh, the splitter uh, later. We will see how to change it. But by default, uh, either an empty line or a tab or a new line is considered as a separator between two words. So the first variable gets uh, the first uh, word, the second variable, the second word, and, and so on. Now, what happens if uh, we give less than five words? We have five variables. Uh, what if uh, we give just uh, two words? Then only the first two variables get uh, value, and the other ones are empty. Now, what happens if uh, we give more than uh, five uh, items. Now, all of the uh, first variables get one word, and the last one get, gets all uh, all the rest. Uh, all of them, all the rest. And the command uh, read and also get some options. It, uh, it gets some uh, variables, variable names, but it can also get some options. Uh, let's see these options with help. So this uh, D uh, is the delim delimiter, uh, which is used to separate one word from uh, the other. Uh, this option P is used to give a prompt. Before reading the input, uh, it prints uh, the given prompt. Uh, this S is for silent uh, input. So whatever we type, uh, it, it, it is not uh, echoed. It is not displayed on the screen. And uh, this T is a timeout in seconds. So uh, it... Uh, waits for an input, but uh, if the timeout expires, then uh, it fails uh, and returns to the, to the prompt. For example, We are using the option P for, for prompt, and this will be the prompt. Now uh, we did not uh, give uh, we did not give a, a variable. So where is it uh, stored the the input? Uh, if if we give no variable, then uh, it is stored on uh, the reply. So this is a uh, kind of default uh, input variable. If a uh, no name of a uh, variable is uh, given to read, then the input is stored on, on this variable by default. Let's see another example. So here we we have a read command with these options. Uh, e means that use read line to get the input. P uh, display a prompt. We just saw this uh, this option previously. This I uh, is to provide a default uh, value. So it suggests a value. This is uh, this is the default value. If we, we just press enter, then it will get this value, or we can modify it. And here is the name of the variable where uh, the input will, will be stored. And then uh, we try to read the password here. And uh, for reading the password, we use the option T, uh, timeout, 
uh, 10 seconds. If no value is given in 10 seconds, then uh, the command uh, read uh, will uh, will uh, will stop and will return a failure. And uh, these uh, commands will be executed. An error message, input time timeout, and uh, exit exit one. This S uh, is silent. And uh, this P, the option P, is for the prompt. What is your uh, username? And it is suggesting me uh, the here, but uh, I can press enter, but I can also modify it. Enter your secret, secret passphrase. You notice that while I type the passphrase, nothing uh, is shown on the on the screen. Input time out. Okay, uh, nothing is shown uh, on the screen, and this is because of the option S. Uh, let's try it again. I press enter. Your second secret passphrase is pass one two three. Uh, in this example, we see how to split the uh, input of uh, uh, read by a different value than empty uh, space. And uh, the, the splitter is stored in this variable, IFS. And uh, IFS stands for Internal Field Separator. Uh, by default, it is empty tab or new line, but we can change it. And uh, we are calling, uh, first, of, first of all, uh, let, let's see that the, the script starts by uh, getting a username, enter the username. Uh, and then uh, with this username, it is searching uh, etc password, which is the file that uh, keeps the usernames uh, and uh, and other details of uh, user accounts. Uh, it, it is the grep is searching for username, and the output of this command grep it, it will print a line. Uh, this line is stored in this variable file info, and then uh, first of all we check whether it is empty or not. If it is empty, then uh, we print an error message and exit. Otherwise, the script will continue. Uh, here uh, we read input from uh, from this uh, line. So we pass uh, this line to the command read and it will split it and uh, will store the different fields in uh, in these variables. And then it will just print uh, these variables, user, uh, user ID, group ID, name, home, and shell. But uh, here be before the command, before running the command, we are giving uh, a value to this variable. Uh, this means this means that uh, this variable will have a different value just uh, during the time that this command is executed. Uh, after this command is executed, then it will uh, have the original value uh, back. So it is a temporary uh, temporary uh, value assignment that that is. Uh, that is valid during the time that the command is executed. And uh, since we are using a semicolon, it will use semicolon to split uh, the fields of the, of the line. Let, let's give it a try. Enter the uh, username. No such user. Uh, enter username. I know that Dashamir exists, so I'm, t I'm testing with Dashamir. Uh, this time it uh, got the results.
Let's see an example uh, program that val validates is its input. So uh, we are getting uh, an input here and uh, the prompt is enter a single item. So we want to validate that uh, it is a single item. There are not uh, two words, for example, A uh, space B, for example, just A. Then, uh, so since there is no name of variable, uh, the input will, will be stored in this variable, reply. And first of all, we check whether it is empty. Uh, so we, we just test enter and we did not enter anything. So this is zero uh, and checks whether it is uh, empty. If it is empty, then uh, we call the function invalid input. Uh, the function invalid input just, print, oops, just, just prints an error message and exceeds uh, the script. Uh, here we check whether it is one item or more items. Uh, we echo the input and uh, we count the words uh, in it. If the number of uh, counted words is uh, greater than one, we uh, again call the function invalid input. Uh, then uh, we make a, a regular uh, expression uh, matching uh, with this, uh, this pattern. And uh, this pattern, uh, has more, uh, one or more of, of these characters that are in, in this list. This plus here mean, means one or more. And these characters are a minus, alphanumeric, so uh, letters and, and numbers, uh, a dot and an underscore. If uh, the input is composed of these uh, characters, then it is a valid file, file name. So we print uh, a valid uh, file name. Uh, otherwise, if the test uh, there fails, then uh, we, we print an error message here. Uh, it's not a valid file name. So in the case that it is a valid uh, file name, uh, we check with this test uh, whether the file exists or not. And uh, here we use again a regular expression matching to check whether it is a floating point uh, number. A floating pointer, pointer number has an optional minus. So this uh, makes it optional. And uh, then zero or, zero or more digits, and then a dot, and then uh, one or more uh, digits, followed by one or more digits. So either it is a floating point number or it is not. Then uh, we check whether it is an integer or not. We have an optional uh, minus because it can be an, a negative integer. And then uh, one or more digits. This plus means one or more. So uh, let, let's try it a couple of times. Enter a single item. ABC is a valid file name. Uh, however, file ABC does not exist. ABC is not a floating point number. ABC is not an integer. So this is still a valid uh, file name, but this file does not exist. Uh, it's not a float floating point number. It is an integer. Again, it is a valid file name, uh, file does not exist. Uh, it is a floating point number, it, it is not an, an integer. Let's see uh, another example. Uh, this time this uh, program displays a menu and uh, gives us the option to select one item from the menu. And uh, depending on the item that uh, we select, it, does uh, one thing or another. So this uh, clear, uh, clears the screen, uh, erases the, whatever is in the screen and uh, positions the cursor at the top of the screen. Then uh, echo, we display these lines, uh, this message, please select 
uh, one display system information to display disk space three display uh, home space utilization and zero quit and then uh, we read an input uh, from the keyboard with this prompt enter selection zero to three then uh, the input will, will be in the reply uh, variable and we check whether uh, reply is uh, either zero or one or two or three in this range from zero to, to three uh, if it is not in this range if it is not in this range then we print the error message invalid entry and uh, exit with an error message uh, with an error code if uh, the input is uh, equal to zero uh, then we just uh, terminate the program and exit and call exit to close the program if uh, the reply is one then uh, we want to display system information so uh, we use the command uptime to display system information if the reply is two then we want to display uh, disk space uh, utilization and we use the command uh, df uh, minus h dot to display this, this information and exit and if the re reply is uh, three uh, three was for uh, home, sp home space utilization uh, in this case uh, we, we make a decision whether if uh, the user is the, the root or not uh, we can check whether the user is uh, root by getting the ID of the user. If the ID of the user is zero, then this is the root user. And uh, we run uh, this command to display this space, uh, home space utilization for all the users. Otherwise, if the user is not root, then we display the home space utilization just for the current uh, user. Let's test it uh, a couple of times. So select uh, display system information or let, let, let's try to enter a uh, wrong value, for example, uh, eight invalid entry because it has to be from, from zero to three. And we check that the input is from uh, either zero or one or two or, or three. Uh, let's run it again. Uh, let, let's say that I press zero, quit, just program terminated, not, nothing is done. And uh, one display system information. And it uh, calls the command uptime. Uptime that displays this info. And uh, run, run it again. Uh, let's press two display disk space. And this time uh, it uses the command uh, disk use it eight dot. Uh, this that uh, shows uh, how much of the of the disk, uh, what is the size of the disk, how much is used, uh, how much is is available, etc. So the, the, there are some uh, other things that we couldn't finish today, but the time is up. Uh, we will see them the next time. Uh, next time we will start with a while and until that we couldn't uh, do today. Uh, let's see whether there are any uh, questions. Or, or you can speak, you can turn on the mic and speak if uh, you have an, any questions. I wrote uh, a couple of questions, uh, Dashmir. Okay, let me find them. Uh, Just at the end. Uh, how, to, how to download the examples. Uh, if, if you log into the uh, to the VC lab, then the examples are located at uh, uh, user uh, local examples, and here we have uh, uh, lesson eleven. But uh, if you run from home, uh, let let me show you uh, where you can find them. Uh, Uh, 
stepping fine down. Katakoda, Katakoda scenarios. And uh, here we have Linux command line interface, and then uh, it is lesson 11. And then uh, here are assets. And here are the examples. So uh, let, let me try to, I'm not sure whether I will be able to paste it to the chat. I'll try to, to paste it to the chat. Yes, I, I succeeded. So here you can find the examples for today. Uh, let let me check the other the other questions. I also have a question. Uh, yeah, yes, Besar. Uh, so I just I just started with this training. Today was my first lesson. So my question is. Uh, the previous lessons, are they recorded on the platform? Uh, uh, some of them are recorded. The last five or six lessons are uh, recorded. Uh, the, previous, uh, uh, the previous lessons were not recorded. I just forgot to record them. Uh, let, let me try to find them uh, here. I, I'm... I saw some recordings on the platform, but um, mm -hmm. like, are they on in in the order that they are posted, or that the order where I should watch them so that I, I can catch up with with the okay, rest? Let, let, let me show you. Uh, okay. I I'm logging as as a guest in this case because I'm not sure whether. So this is lesson one. Uh, here you have an interactive tutorial. This is not a recording, but there are some instructions and an in environment where you can try these uh, instructions. And the same for lesson two, uh, lesson three, uh, lesson four, uh, and so on. And uh, from lesson five, uh, be besides the interactive uh, tutorials, uh, there are also some uh, recordings. Okay. Uh, no, from lesson six. So if you click presentation, for example, uh, or this is this is the last recording yeah. of, of the last lesson. Uh, then uh, you you will you will be able to follow the uh, the last the the recording. Okay. So, so some of them. Uh, okay. Uh, so when is this like until the, when is this training gonna keep like keep going there are there are three or four uh just three other weeks and i hope that we will finish by the end of uh march ah okay thank you just one day per week uh one, one hour for, uh, for week uh it is on uh saturday uh, evening uh from seven to eight, usually. Is and the first two. meeting? Sorry. This is the first meeting. No, this is the this is not the first meeting. This is the tenth lesson, actually eleventh uh, lesson lesson. But uh, it is the second lesson for Bash scripting. Uh, I printed uh, two more questions, uh, Dashami, uh, just about uh, the triple. Uh, uh, arrow left oh, that okay, I okay. ever yes, seen. I, I, yeah, I, I forgot to I forgot to explain it. Yes. Uh, let, let me try to find it. Anyway, uh, 
so uh, this triple er arrow is like a here document, but uh, it is one line here document. Uh, if you remember from the last uh, uh, lesson, we explained uh, his document. A here document is like this. Uh, cut, then uh, we start the here document. This is the token, uh, for example, end of file. And uh, then uh, we type some lines and then we type the token to end the input. And uh, the, this will, will be passed to the standard uh, input of, uh, of this command. Uh, now we can do this like, uh, like this, uh, here document, but with one file, for example, test. And uh, so uh, it is sending this line, a single line to this command, to the standard input of uh, this command. And uh, we are using it with uh, read. Uh, because, for example, read the uh, answer and uh, so uh, we have uh, redirected the standard input. Uh, standard input usually is the keyboard, but in this case, uh, we send input from uh, this one and we don't uh, have to type this from the keyboard. And uh, this is uh the only way that we can uh, send standard input from a, a string with the command read uh, we can try it for example like this uh, echo and we try to pipe to read but uh, this uh, uh, actually this is the the old uh, variable Let, let's try to to use another variable. You see that uh, it does not work in this case. Uh, if we try to pipe uh, something to the standard input yeah. of, of this command, why, why it doesn't work? It doesn't work because of the way that the pipe uh, works uh, in uh, bash. Uh, pipe uh, creates a subshell for the command that is uh, after the pipe. And uh, when you create a subshell, then uh, all the variables of the current shell are inherited to, to this process of to this command. And uh, this, this variable gets assigned, it gets a value, value but it is inside the subshell. But one, once the command is terminated, then the, the environment of, uh, of the subshell is erased as well. So uh, this variable is another one. It is in the in the current shell. This variable is not in the current shell. It is in the subshell uh, that is created for for this command. And so we are not able to use the the value in in the current shell. So uh, it is not possible to use it with a pipe uh, a read with the pipe in this way. However, it is possible to to use it with a uh, with a here document uh, like like this one. Uh, I hope that I I explained it. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. It's a short form of here document, uh, but uh, the redirection with just a full here document with Terminator would work uh, as well or not? Yes. Uh, yes, it will work uh, as well. Uh, we, we can try it's it. More uh, compact. Uh, this is more compact, more compact, and it is uh, for just one line. And usually, uh, when we read something, it is just uh, one line. It is more compact, but uh, this one would work as well. Uh, for example, and I close the document, and now I see the value. So uh, it works, but it is more compact, just more okay. compact. Uh, what about the uh, second question is a uh, decimal separator. Do we have a, um, as a locals, uh, a variable which uh, we can uh, get uh, 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 where we have the dot or the comma as a decimal separator? Because uh, in Italian, we normally have it. Uh, the Italian uh, separator is the comma, not the dot. Okay. Yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, it, it depends on the uh, on the local uh, setting of the of the yeah. system. So, uh, 
if the localization is Italian, then, uh, but the, the script that we are using uh, does not use localization. It, it, it is just using a regular expression uh, pattern matching. So it is matching uh, the given input with a regular expression. So uh, if you want to check uh, for Italian localization, then you have to check this pattern matching. Instead of a dot, then you will use a comma. Uh, so okay. in, the, in the example that uh, we tried, uh, there is nothing related to localization. It, is, it just assumes that the input will be in this form, uh, the dot will be the separator and it checks for a dot. Uh, but uh, if you know that the input will have a comma, then you have to check for a comma. You, you have to check the pattern. Okay, thanks. Uh, Andreas says that uh, he cannot hear me any, anymore. Maybe it has some problems. Okay. Okay, if there are no other questions, then we can uh, close for today and uh, we'll see you, I will see you next uh, week. Bye.